Anyone with a sweet tooth can relate to this story. Coming up, how one Georgia bakery is using new technology to stay open 24-7. And Elsa is now moving away from the CSRA, but we are tracking more storms in the forecast for the rest of this afternoon. Update on radar and that weekend forecast next. Are you too hot? Heat the summer heat with a window AC unit from Davis Appliance and Furniture for as low as $2.99. We offer a cool, no credit needed financing options to meet your needs. For the brands you trust to the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Slash impact goes sky high. Slash sensational sky high mascara from Maybelline, New York. Limitless length plus volume. Sensational from every angle. Slash sensational sky high mascara. Only from Maybelline, New York. Enjoy the weather this season with your furry friends, but be careful. Keep your animals cool by exercising in the morning or evening, and always provide them plenty of shade and water. This summer safety tip brought to you by Hammond Hill Animal Hospital. Welcome to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. We offer new and used appliances, and we service what we sell. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the top brands and lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Another live look at Alfred Ellie Beach High School in Savannah, where the first lady, she's about to, she's speaking currently. She's been touring a vaccine clinic set up at the school with Senator Raphael Warnock. We're going to listen in. As well. And Principal Daughtry, uh, we're excited to be here with the Bulldogs. So we thanked all the, or I thanked all the officials, but there's one group here that I think we all need to really thank, and they are the nurses and the healthcare workers. Will you stand up so we can thank you, please? I just had the chance to meet with some of this city's healthcare leaders and hear about really what you've overcome in the last year. And they're in the audience today, and I want to thank all the docs who took the time to, uh, and healthcare workers who met with me today. You know, it's really been difficult, but like frontline workers across this country, you met this crisis with courage. And now you're working tirelessly to get Savannah vaccinated. And thank goodness you are, because no one knows this community or how to meet people where they are like you do. And you're the best messengers we have. And the president and I are so grateful for your work. You know, it's so hard to believe how far we've come since, since this point last year, think back. Think back where you were. Do you remember how quiet the streets were then? Do you remember the empty grocery aisles? Do you remember just how uncertain and lonely many of us felt? Today, we're finally getting back to the things that we've lost, like hugging the people we love, catching up with friends face to face, smiling at strangers. But as far as we've come, we're not done yet. And right now, only 44% of Georgia residents have had at least one shot. And that's just not enough, which is why we came to Savannah today. So to everyone who is listening or watching on those cameras at the back of the room, I'm here to ask you, to plead with you, to please get vaccinated. Because it's safe, like the doc said. The vaccines have been rigorously tested and millions of Americans have already received their shot because it's effective. Studies show that the vaccines All right, are the, the first lady there speaking in Savannah, encouraging everyone to get vaccinated, specifically people here in Georgia. Later on, she's going to head to Orlando for the National Scripps Spelling Bee. 
A live look now out. Bye -bye. As much as we love bakeries, I wish they stayed open longer. Most are closed in the early afternoon. Well, Molly Godley has more on one business in Albany, bringing new technology to stay open later. The owner says she knew this vending machine would do well in Albany because most bakeries don't stay open past six. Now she can serve customers 24-7. Quinetta Hall says she got the inspiration for the cute cake vending machine from her friend. And she said, you know what I seen when I was in Macon? She said, I saw a vending machine with hair and lashes. She said, if they can do hair and lashes, you think you probably can do your treats? She had no idea that I took that to heart and I ran with it. From there, Hall began researching what type of machine could hold and refrigerate her cakes, as well as how to personalize it. She sells out frequently. Most of the traffic from the vending machine comes through after hours. She says the after hours traffic is people who get off work late and can't come in during normal hours. However, she does see people use it throughout the day. For some people, they just want to run out of the house and don't want to be faced with, can I help you, different things like that. So it's convenient for those people. She says the feedback has been all positive. Patsy Albright says she had to come try it out for herself. And when I seen this on um, social media, I was like, oh, that is a great idea. When she's not open, we can always get our treats. So it's like she opened 24 hours. Hall is hoping with the success she's seen so far, she can expand and partner with other businesses. We would go out as far as maybe two hours away. Um, I got things in place where we'll be able to do that. Did you ever think that it would be doing as well as it is doing? No. I was, I was really nervous, to be honest. Mainly the support from my family and friends just telling me, move forward, do it, do it. So here we are, and it's doing things to us. She's hoping in time Southwest Georgia will see more of her vending machines at other businesses. What a great idea. Hopefully we can get something like that right here. But glad it's getting good use. I mean, the truth is, we always want sweets late at night. At least I do, Riley. Absolutely, me too. I have a big sweet tooth, so that was looking real good in that story. We have seen some... We spoke with the Richmond County Elections Director also, and she tells us since Commissioner Sias has at least another year in office, if he resigns or is removed from office, that could trigger a special election. Much more news to come right now. Let's check in with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale. And Riley, what a difference a day makes. Absolutely, Richard. Definitely seeing a much better afternoon out there for us. Elsa did bring some heavy rain across some portions of the CS where he late last night into early tomorrow. Bamberg and Barnwell County saw the majority of it. They got between two to three inches, and those were the max values we saw across the, the region. Here in Augusta, we saw just over half an inch, so luckily we did dodge that real heavy rain impact from Elsa. Elsa is now working its way into Virginia. Now crossing over that North Carolina Virginia line. A lot of flash flood warnings still present with Elsa as it continues up that mid-Atlantic coastline. In the wake of Elsa this afternoon, we are tracking a few more showers and storms that will likely be impacting the central and eastern CSRA as we progress later into this afternoon and evening. So we're dry currently here in Augusta, but these showers and a few storms are trying to make their way towards us. So if you have plans to be out and about over the next several hours, it's looking nice right now over downtown Augusta, but we could see a few raindrops here over the next couple of hours. Temperatures hold steady in the 80s until we get past sunset, and then tonight's looking pretty muggy, folks. Not expected to get out of the 70s uh, by tomorrow morning, so it won't be a muggy start for your Friday. We'll have a look at those storm chances heading into your Friday afternoon and weekend in just a little bit. Students don't have to wear a mask on South Carolina school buses. That is the word from the State Department of Education this afternoon. Before, the department was enforcing the CDC's order requiring the use of face coverings on public transportation, including a school bus. Now, state officials say it's up to the school district to decide if they want to require a mask on a bus. The Aiken County School District confirming they will not require, but they do recommend that students wear a mask on the school bus. The Biden administration targeting areas with unvaccinated people, bringing one of the most public faces associated with the administration here to Georgia today. First Lady Jill Biden in Savannah right now. You're looking at some video from her arrival at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport about two hours ago. From there, the First Lady went to Beach High School, where Georgians are getting vaccinated right now. She was joined by Senator Raphael Warnock and Savannah Mayor Van Johnson. A somber moment down in Surfside, Florida this morning. Rescue teams holding a moment of silence. The moment marks the transition from search and rescue efforts to recovery. No longer looking for survivors. The rescue workers instead 
no, they are only searching for bodies now. It has now been two weeks since the condo building collapsed overnight while people were sleeping. Leaders say the shift away from search and rescue wasn't an easy decision to make. The decision to transition from rescue to recovery is an extremely difficult one and one that requires an extremely methodical, arduous, and careful process that looks at specific factors. The death toll rising to 60 people today, while 80 people are still unaccounted for in all that rubble. The city of Grovetown considering raising its minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mayor Gary Jones says he realizes the city has to be competitive to keep quality employees. In a post on Facebook, he says the city has found a way to raise the minimum wage without raising taxes. Mayor Jones says they plan to talk about that at their next city council meeting coming up on Monday. As always, the public is invited to watch in person or online. A federal judge deciding not to block parts of Georgia's recent election law. For In his order yesterday, the U.S. District Judge did not rule out the possibility for future elections. Arson investigators are looking for who is responsible for setting a Columbia County home on fire. Happened around 7 on Tuesday on Sullivan Hartfield Road in Evans. Officials say someone intentionally set the fire in the living room. They saw the occupant of that home, John Dickerson, running away, and he is a person of interest in the case. Arson Control is offering a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest and conviction. The iconic Krispy Kreme in Atlanta going up in flames for the second time this year. Now fire investigators are trying to figure out how it happened again. The place just can't catch a break, and there wasn't even power in the building, but the fire did start in the kitchen, then spread to the attic. As Sierra Cummings reports, the investigation unfolds as police still search for the arson suspect in February's case. They thought they were done the last time they rolled up these hoses. But nearly five months after the February flames, once more, neighbors watch crews put out the fire at Midtown's Krispy Kreme. Who would have guessed that they caught on fire again? An already charred property left smoldering Wednesday afternoon, and fire investigators arriving at the site believe the bizarre case did not stem from electrical issues. I mean, no one's in there making donuts, so I really just don't know what it could be. All the power had been cut. All the previous damage still left behind, too. Some of it even causing crews difficulty. Lots of water damage, and there hasn't been any removal of the debris in the restaurant, so we had to deal with that. They really had to get in there and work hard just to keep the fire at bay from what it was when we initially arrived on scene this afternoon. Officials say it began in the kitchen, then spread to the attic. Smoke from the roof began to blanket the building, one that was soon to get rebuilt. The owner, NBA star Shaquille O'Neal, not yet confirming what's to come of the iconic restaurant after this. There shouldn't have been anyone in there, but we're going to investigate to try to figure out what exactly took place. The entire area is still blocked off with fencing, which has been there since the first fire back in February, but it was supposed to keep people out. Apparently did not do a very good job. So now police are checking nearby surveillance video to see if they see anyone going inside that fence. But sort of a, a mystery there. A place yeah. that's burned twice. Yeah, they, All they want to do is sell donuts to the people. I don't know. Shaquille O'Neal trying to make that iconic place, sure. you know, an icon again. But we'll try again. Yeah. We need a higher fence. Riley? I bet that hot sign's on there, that Krispy Kreme, for sure. <laughs> All right, we are tracking the chance for a few showers and storms this afternoon into the evening, and then heading into the weekend, we'll most likely see some more on your first look forecast coming up. And a Delta variant sweeping across the country and threatening to become the dominant strain in South Carolina. White House health experts so worried when we come back. You know, the one on your side. Okay, Adam, thanks for breaking that down for us. According to a study by DHEC, of the 11 COVID-related deaths during the first two weeks of June, all 11 people were not considered fully vaccinated. That does include people who got both doses, but it hadn't been two weeks since their second dose, so get it soon. The National Weather Service confirming a tornado did damage a neighborhood in Effingham County yesterday as Tropical Storm Elsa passed over Georgia. Sarah Winkleman reports from a subdivision near Springfield where that EF1 tornado touched down. This area in Effingham County has been out of power since the storm went through last night about 11 o'clock. They've gotten a lot of work done so far today, but take a look at the damage already done. A lot of siding is missing off of houses. Not a lot of damage to the structures, but a lot of that siding from shingles is what we're seeing from houses. A lot of fencing down. Take a look at this fence just completely uprooted from the ground from those winds and this whole line back of neighborhoods has fences down there's lots of debris back here they're already cleaning up though a lot of trees and this shed is one of the worst structures that we've seen 
wind from this storm. What's left of that shed over there? That camper moved a little bit. So a lot of these neighbors though already out cleaning, continuing to clean up all of this mess from that possible tornado that went by. The National Weather Service will be out here sometime later this week to confirm if that was a tornado or not. But for now, this, this community coming together, working to clean up the debris and hoping to get power back soon. In Effingham County, Georgia, Sarah Winkleman, Great TV News. So damage in Effingham County, you spoke to Kings Bay last night, right. damage at a submarine base there in South Georgia. People are killed in Jacksonville. Yeah, serious storms that came through and that, uh, that storm in Effingham County triggered a tornado warning for us. Yeah, it was right after the 11 o'clock newscast last night. As soon as we got done with the show, we had that tornado warning in Screbin County, and it was from that cell that moved through Effingham. They got reports of damage, and they were like, hey, this cell is likely producing a tornado, so we got to continue this. And so, yeah, we stayed on the air for about 20 minutes with that. Luckily, no damage really reported in our area from Elsa as it continues off towards the northeast. Here's the latest look at Elsa from Doppler Max radar. Still produced a few tornado warnings close to that north and south Carolina coastline earlier this morning, and still producing some very intense rain bands starting to move on shore across that mid-Atlantic coast. They do have flash flood warnings in effect, so Elsa still maintaining tropical storm strength and expected to possibly even strengthen again as we head it, as the system heads towards the northeast over the next day. Now, in the wake of Elsa, we're still tracking a few showers and thunderstorms across the region this afternoon. The heaviest activity is now starting to work its way into our western counties, but we've had a few of these isolated showers down south of Augusta in Scrap. Jenkins, Burke County, you've had these tiny little downpours move through. But for us here in Augusta, our rain chances are most likely going to come into play from these downpours now starting to track down I-20. They're moving west to east, so they're currently impacting places like Wilkes, Tolliver, Hancock County. If you're next in line, these showers are going to be heading your way. So Warren County next, then McDuffie, then Columbia and Richmond County here closer towards the metro. We also are tracking a few showers, and these showers have the potential to turn into thunderstorms and they are making their way towards Clarksville Lake so stay safe on the water if you do have plans ahead up there over the next hour or so. The showers and storms will last up until a little bit after sunset for us but past midnight it does look dry. Early tomorrow morning is definitely going to be a muggy start. We'll likely have a few clouds out there as well. Temps waking up in the 70s will heat up into at least the mid to low 90s tomorrow afternoon. It is going to be humid so with that moisture in place it is going to allow for more pop-up showers and storms to develop Friday afternoon through at least around sunset heading into later Friday. The weekend is looking similar as well. We should stay dry the first half of Saturday and Sunday. We'll likely be tracking a few more of those showers and storms both afternoons this weekend. Here's a current look at downtown Augusta. It actually doesn't look too bad for us. Starting to see some blue sky. Temperatures today have really stayed in the 80s thanks to more clouds and sun throughout most of the day. But into this evening and before sunset, we most likely will see at least a few downpours and storms get close to us here in Augusta. So keep that in mind. Our rain chance is not zero for the rest of today, even though it does look nice out there currently. As we head into Friday this weekend, those rain chances look highest mainly afternoon hours. So get those outdoor plans in early in the day. As we head into next week, that pattern is very persistent. Highs in the 90s and storms looking likely most afternoons. And we also have our newest sunshade winner to give away to announce. Congrats to McKenna Fowler from Augusta. You can get your very own Plunkett Heating and Air Sunshade. The way, best way to do that is go to WRDW.com, click on Contest, enter your email. We'll announce these winners right here on First at Five every Tuesday and Thursday. A local grandmother trying to help prevent bullying in our schools through a new book. And she's using her own grandson's experiences to try and make that change. Dad, fight. We are always pursuing greatness, but we're always grateful of where we came from. A local woman hoping to shine some light on bullying in elementary schools using her grandson's story. Joanne Freeman wrote a book called The Bulletproof Kid. Our Brianna Collier talked to her about why it was so important for her to bring attention to the issue. I'm BC, Bulletproof. I'm headed to the top, you can tell me if you want to. BC, Bulletproof. I'm headed to the top, you can tell me if you want to. That seven year old Emory, the Bullyproof Kid, singing the song that goes to a book all about him. Recently published by his grandmother, Joanne Freeman Blake, the children's book focuses on a big topic Blake says doesn't get enough attention, bullying. I wanted to expand it and talk to the other kids about it as well, so I decided the best way that I can come up with them 
to understand exactly what I'm trying to say is to make a fun little children's book. She said she wanted to put a spotlight on the issue in a way kids in Maury's age would understand. We want our parents to listen and we want the teachers to listen and we just want to put some attention to bullying because it's, it's really a sad situation. Also, using Imori's experience with bullying to create a platform for other kids to speak up who may be going through the same thing. I wanted to use him and um, make him a character so kids can look at him and say, okay, well, he's a child going through this. I like it. Why do you like it? Because it makes people not bullied. It makes people stand up for themselves. Hoping to end the cycle wherever he's at. Hey, I'm the bully proof kid and he tells everybody about this book. So with this book, this opens him up more. He don't mind talking to people about it. One story at a time. My bully proof kid. <laughs> Oh, sweet little boy. It's good marketing. I yeah, think. yeah, great marketing. But Blake says she's hoping to get the book into all elementary school libraries in our area. The anniversary of the book is actually on the 17th of this month. It'll mark a year since it was published, and it is in Maury's Oh, that's day. perfect, too. Yeah. So if you'd like a copy, they say it's on all the platforms, including Amazon. You can Google Imori, the bully-proof kid. Also, you might remember Joanne Freeman. She's the assistant at Visiting Angels, just awarded for her work with the people living there. So all around, congratulations yes. on all of that. Busy, impressive lady, mm -hmm. but uh, great idea. message for the kids. Riley? All right, guys, we are tracking storm chances heading into the weekend, but mainly afternoon hours. So if you have outdoor plans Saturday or Sunday, try to get them in early. Have another look at that full seven day just after break. You know, it's yes. is now moving off towards the northeast, going to be impacting the mid-Atlantic over the next several hours, and then impacting the northeast coast as we head into tonight and tomorrow. And we actually could see Elsa strengthening a little bit as we actually did strengthen last update. Winds now up to 50 miles an hour. This sort of strengthening over land. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, but this is now the third system so far this year that has made a, an approach through the CSRA. We had Claudette first, then we had Danny, and now we've had Elsa. It has been a very busy start to the 2020 21 season. Let's hope it is not a sign of things to come. No threat in the tropics over the next two to five days that we're currently tracking, but we will have the opportunity for a few storms uh, over the next couple of days. So keep that in mind if you have late plans. Try to get those late plans in early in the day. Those storms looking likely into the weekend. And speaking of Elsa, the storm's traveling further from us, but the southeast can